West Florida State College presents Outlook, a public service presentation of the college and Cox Communications, focusing on the events, activities, and instructional programs of Northwest Florida State College. Hello there, Raider fans, and welcome to the basketball edition of the Raider Sports Beat. We're delighted to have you join us tonight, and uh, I am Ramsey Ross. I'm the athletic director, and I'll be your host this evening. But uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking Raider basketball. It's November, uh, so not a better time to do that and uh, preview the upcoming season. We've got two fantastic teams uh, this season we're very excited about. And first of all, we're going to be joined with our women's basketball coach, Patrick Harrington, entering his fifth, fourth season. Fourth year. Fourth season at, uh, at Northwest Florida, and he's done a fantastic job. And Coach, thank you very much for joining us, first of all. Ramsey, thanks. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to join you here at this time of year. And uh, I also just, first of all, before we get into the 13-14 season, which is going to be very promising, always uh, going to be exciting from what I've seen so far, but I do want to recap the 2012-13 season because it really was a storybook season for you. It was a turning point in your program. You earned a co-conference co championship. You went 27 and five, a remarkable season. Uh, went all the way to the national tournament to the Elite Eight. Just talk about how last year really put us back on the map. Well, it was a great run and, and uh, I was very proud of our ladies um, coming together and working together. Um, you know, we talk about playing for each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought last year's group did a, a real good job down the end. And uh, down the end, and uh, was able to, uh, you know, capture that uh, Panhandle Conference Championship, co-championship. But uh, uh, first time we'd done that, I think, in, in uh, uh, 18 or 19 years, 18 maybe. Years. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, then a, a chance to take that and go to the national tournament. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, I was on the bus with uh, 15 ladies, my family, and uh, I can't tell you how enjoyable that trip was. Uh, mm -hmm. It was really remarkable. I thought our ladies performed well at the national tournament. Uh, we had an opportunity there to go to the Final Four. Uh, didn't close out that last game, uh, but um, gave uh, gave the returners a little bit of uh, something, taste in their mouth of, of, mm -hmm. of the great experience. And uh, as we always t tell these young ladies, they're very talented. Uh, they've got great high aspirations and goals, but those individual goals are hard to, to, to realize unless their team goals are recognized. And the opportunity to go to the national tournament put uh, several of them in a, in, into a position where they were able to reach their individual goals and, and transition to, to, to four-year programs. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting at junior college because you only have these uh, young ladies for two years, at, at best, sometimes one year. And so uh, it's hard to continue that momentum uh, translating it into this upcoming season, but I think you've done that. You've had a, a very good summer, uh, a very good preseason. You've already started off the season 2-0 in an impressive fashion. So how have you carried that on to this upcoming season? Well, lots, a lot's gone on since, since you know, mm -hmm. last, uh, last uh, spring and, and, and through the summer. And uh, first of all, congratulations to you and your wife on oh, your uh, new you. addition. Thank uh, you. <laughs> I'd like to be the first to offer uh, uh, her a full scholarship. I'm okay. doing it on tape. So uh, <laughs> I know Jack Byerly will be here in the spring to talk okay. about it, but uh, I'm, I'm beating him to the punch. <laughs> right. uh, but we've had a great, uh, great summer. The ladies uh, came in and uh, worked hard during the summer. Um, you know, today's athlete is different than, you know, maybe 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the challenges that we face with today's kids is uh, a byproduct of, of, of technology that's, that's, that's come into the world. And uh, I always talk about communication and how hard uh, it is for these young ladies to communicate openly and vocally uh, with their teammates and getting to know each other, getting to know each other's roles. Uh, and uh, as we transition into our season, uh, you know, that's one of, the, one of the key elements that we've got to stress on, not just hard work and skill set and stuff like that, but we've got to be good teammates. We've got to communicate with each other. Uh, I love this time of year. Uh, basketball season's here. Last week was a big week. We had mm -hmm. Meet the Raiders. A uh, chance to introduce our, our, our team to the Raider Club, and then we backed that up with uh, with two games, and, and we're uh, um, you know did a pretty good job. Won, won both games in hand by by 30 and 50, and uh, kind of that's where I expect our ladies to be right now. Mm -hmm. This week will be a challenge, and November will be a challenge as it always is. We play a, a, a little bit stiffer competition, and then we mm -hmm. get into uh, a couple of classics that I love having: the the Rick Flores Classic and then the Bruce Stewart Classic yeah. at the end of the month. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. Talking about this year's team, uh, you do have three returning starters from last year's group, uh, but that's really essentially 
the core of that's really all, all your returners essentially so uh talk about the leadership those three provide and how that's affected the team going into this season well the challenge is that that we face and you mentioned it uh, a second ago is every year we've got a new team so we build every year uh we got to scrap it down uh, break it down and rebuild it mm -hmm. um Sometimes you have three or four kids that, that will, will transition from year to year, and we're fortunate that two of our, uh, of our wing forwards, uh, Rudyon Eduardo and Carla Batchelor, uh, both come back as All-Americans. Uh, they participated in the National Junior College All-American game this summer uh, over at the arena. Uh, they're, they're good players. They're, they're long, they're versatile. Uh, they're the kind of kids that I like to, 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 to recruit mm -hmm. to our program and our system, um, primarily defensively, but they, they've got good instincts. They've got a good, good work ethic. They're two mainstays. And then the third sophomore is Alyssa Dupree, uh, who played at Paxton High School, was the Northwest Florida Daily News Small College Player of the Year. She's from a uh, little town uh, east of Paxton called Darlington. And mm -hmm. uh, frankly, that's where her shooting range starts. So uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, she's done a great job in becoming from Steve Williams, who was the high school coach up there. She was more of a post player and an mm -hmm. interior scrappy kid. And uh, she's transitioned into more of a basketball player now. Uh, getting her to look for her shot uh, has been a, a, a process. It's evolving. She's doing better than that. And uh, um, I think this year's team in general has more talent than I've ever had. Um, but talent doesn't win championships. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got to grow as a team. They've got to learn to play hard. They've got to learn to play for each other. Uh, and those are the challenges that, that, that we face. Um, I think in the post, we've got three young ladies and Brittany Martin, a transfer from Old Dominion. Uh, very good program. We got hurt there, and now she's uh, with us, and uh, she's rehabbed her ACL. Uh, Worked very hard at doing that, yeah. by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and she's, she, she, she brings 6'2". She mm -hmm. brings some length and some activity on the offensive glass. And then I've got two very talented freshmen in the post. So when I think about it, I've got two wings that are good. I've got a young lady that can shoot. I've got three post players. And my guards are transfers, so mm -hmm. it's the first time I haven't had a returning point guard. <laughs> um, you know, so that's going to be a challenge. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, Janae Blunt did the job this weekend, but mm -hmm. I've got two freshmen that I think are pretty good. And then I've got another transfer that's sitting out that uh, is going to be a nice addition to the ball club. Well, you know, you, you mentioned uh, how you felt like this may be the most talented team you've had, but it does take a while to build that chemistry and that leadership and everybody to buy in. And I think they've done that in a short period of time. Um, they obviously were here in the summer, but got back in August. And I've really seen, I've been impressed with their work ethic, getting out and grinding and, and really buying into your system. And so I wonder, you know, they already have the accolades. They're ranked th uh, third in the state and seventh in the country. How do you ground them and have them continue to pound away and, uh, and get better each day? Practice. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're very fortunate mm -hmm. that our administration, Dr. Handy and, and, and yourself and uh, the entire uh, Northwest Florida State, you know, uh, uh, administration supports athletics the way they do. The fact that we can have these young ladies here in the summertime taking classes and also, mm -hmm. you know, working together and getting to know each other and, 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 and allowing us a couple of hours each week to work them out, that's a huge benefit. Yeah. I mean, five years ago, that didn't go on. And uh, you know, with the change in the rules, it's it's really shown that Northwest Florida State is a is, is a leader in junior college athletics, particularly in women's and men's basketball. Um, the fact that we can come in here and work out in that arena, uh, have an opportunity for our kids to get to know each other, get to know their personalities, get to know their strengths, while also getting you know really on some solid ground academically. Mm -hmm takes a little bit of a load off them in the fall, you know, in terms of, you know, instead of taking 18 hours, maybe they can take 15, you know. Sure. Um, and that, you know, so that stuff all goes into, uh, in, into what we do, establishing a standard of excellence. Uh, I didn't set the standard, uh, you know, Mickey Englet did it. Mm -hmm. um, when uh, you and Mickey hired me, uh, there was a set of standards and excellence that you guys wanted to have. And uh, I know I wasn't Mickey's first choice. I was your first <laughs> choice. I was Mickey's eighth choice. He, he, he went to Van Chancellor. Yeah. Uh, he went to Andy Landers, Pat uh, Summit. Pat Summit. Yeah. Uh, you know he did. He yeah. went through all. Of them. Yeah. Fortunately, I know I was your first choice, <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yeah. But you know, Coach Anglet did a great job in, mm -hmm. in, in establishing, establishing the program in the early '90s, going to the national tournament, and uh, you know the fact that. Uh, uh, that we're here uh, to, to, to take on that legacy of what you guys want. Uh, that's great. The, the program doesn't change. The, the mm -hmm. goals don't change. The, 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 the issue is, are we going to hang a, bang, a banner again this year? Mm -hmm. um, that's
that's where we're measured by. If we don't go to the state tournament or the national tournament, we know it's not a successful year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that. I like the fact that we play in the best junior college conference in the country. I like the fact that if we don't bring it, uh, we're not going to lose. We're going to get embarrassed. And you've heard me say that before. Um, so, you know, I'm excited about this group. I think they, they can defend uh, if they play with activity defensively and they, they become the hardest working team in the country. Uh, I think we have a chance to compete for championships. Well, you mentioned the conference. The depth of the conference is remarkable. Um, I think five out of the uh, all five teams are ranked in the top ten in the state uh, in the current poll, which is uh, top seven. Know, top seven, excuse me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, certainly it's going to be a, a, a grind each night. Uh, but certainly that challenges you for the big stage and, and you know throughout the country and things like that. But you know, a, as we look in the actual qualifications for the state tournament. You know, this is the year that the conference gets two. Uh, you know, the last two years we've had three of our five teams get in, but this year it's two. So that the margin of error has obviously gotten a little bit smaller. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but uh, but I know that's something your uh, your your girls are embracing. Well, the ladies they, they came to Northwest Florida State for a reason, mm -hmm. and that was to play against some of the best competition in the country. Their goals are, should be their goals, and they should be very lofty. Uh, and they recognize that they can't realize those team goals, those individual goals, unless the team goal is met. Rick Pitino said that when he was at Kentucky. He had like 10 McDonald's All-Americans. He said, you guys want to get drafted, you got to go deep into the NCAA tournament, win a national championship. And uh, I think that, you know, that, that, that line of thought uh, is, is, is what we've had here mm -hmm. since, uh, since I arrived. And um, I'm very proud of the fact that, you know, that we try to focus them uh, through hard, intense practices, game-like uh, conditions. Uh, you know, we, we, we try to put numbers on them. We try mm -hmm. to put, you know, a certain set of goals. You got to make X amount of shots in a certain time. You got to execute so many, uh, you know, plays in, 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 in a game like situation. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do that, if you play against eight people, if you play against seven people, um, you're going to be, it's going to be easier for you to compete when you're on the stage in a game. And um, the conference is as tough as it's always been. I think the balance is great. Uh, I know that uh, I get paid to talk about Northwest Florida State. Uh, I'll just give our reader, our, our viewers a, a quick overview. Chipola's good, Gulf Coast is good, <laughs> Tallahassee's good, and Pensacola's good. Now let's yeah. talk about the Raiders. Absolutely. You know, when you first came on uh, as, as the head coach of, of the Lady Raiders, uh, you used to always say, I'm obsessed with my team and my team only. I think that's a great philosophy and it served you very well. Uh, real quick, Coach, can you You don't just... pay me to coach the other team, exactly all right? right? So I'm going to just coach our team, that's and I exactly tell the kids, right. all I know is I know <laughs> what I know, yeah. you know? Well, well Coach, in, in, in 60 seconds, can you just give us a quick rundown of how our uh, sophomores are, are doing at the next level? Uh, Luana Lavulu, mm -hmm. uh, starting at UCLA. I had, uh, had a good opening night against the uh, exhibition game the other day. Uh, started, played about 34 minutes. Uh, really happy for Lou. Uh, she's doing great out at, at the University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, Tavarsha Scott uh, got in the uh, uh, first exhibition game the other night and uh, had uh, 15 points and 12 rebounds in 12 minutes. Wow. Uh, and Gary Blair, the head coach at Texas A&M, he's going to be a Hall of Famer, won a national championship. He said that kid plays so darn hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so really proud we of, know uh, about that. of Tavarsha. Yeah. And then Keani Parker right now, she's right in the fight for the starting point guard's position at, uh, at Auburn. That's um, which, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. Tori Carter went to Auburn Montgomery and, and uh, unfortunately last night uh, got a text from her that she tore her other leg uh, ACL so unfortunately mm -hmm. she's battled some injuries great young lady uh, she's gonna rehab she's it. a she's fighter gonna... though yeah she yeah. has all she knows yeah. and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know real uh, you know really uh, hoping and praying that she gets healthy absolutely well coach thank you very much for joining us best of luck this season and we can't uh, can't wait to see what you do on the floor this year well I'm, I'm I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it I know the second half of the segment is about uh, our men's basketball team and I'd like to wish Steve DeMayo uh, and the Raider fans, please uh, welcome Steve DeMayo to our program and, and our college. He's going to do a fantastic job. I've known Steve for a number of years, and uh, he's a hardworking guy, and uh, we expect some great things from, uh, from our men's team. Well, thank you very much, Coach, like I said. And uh, stick around, Raider fans. We will be visiting with the first-year head men's basketball coach, Steve DeMayo, when we return.